All right, it is seven o'clock. Time to call this meeting to order. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Taylor, if you lead us in tonight's opening prayer, please. Dear God, tonight we ask for your guidance in making the right choices for this city. We also pray for the healing and comfort of those in Ukraine. We continue to keep us all safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Call the roll, please. Mr. Clement? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Duncan? Here. Mr. Sherman? Here. Mr. Here. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the last regular meeting? Any council discussion on them? Motion to adopt, please. Second. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Okay, we're to the auditor slash treasurer's report. Mr. Saffington, the floor is yours. The floor is mine. The floor is yours. Get this down. All right, everybody, I'll start with the treasurer's report for December 2021. We've got here a cash balance 3.752 million on page one. You'll see total interest on investments for 2021, 1,000. 666.18 pennies. Treasurer provided his reconciliation uh, on the sweep account on the next two pages coming up uh, with no difference at all. Um, and I'm looking through real quick. Looks like we've got all of that. You're good to go. On his last page, he provided a year in summary. This was very helpful to my office last year at the end of 2020. Um, it basically is just the beginning. Debits and credits and interest of everything he can see in the accounts that uh, the treasurer manages. And then just increases and decreases down at the bottom. So you can see both the bank accounts, the cash balances of the city increase, um, and the total interest earned on all accounts, not just the sweep account. So a really helpful yearly summary that Mike has provided a second time. So that's December. On January, we see total funds 4.494 million, much larger balance because of wastewater treatment plant project funding. I think it was a million or so. We were just in between getting the funds and paying it. And his reconciliation, uh, coming down to a zero dollar difference and honestly it was a really smooth start for january so he didn't leave me any comments or anything for you guys but i think that covers it scott can i ask are we able to open up that link i emailed everybody on this mm. computer here i did not prepare no sir no i failed to prepare is there a way to email or send it to this, or do you know? Is there anything connected to that? I'm personally email, but I logged out of it. Okay. Shoot. All right. Well, I gave everybody electronic versions of the auditor's report. Mm -hmm. uh, for those at home, it's available on the website already. But let me pull it up here. Just a second. Okay. Okay, so I've got a December 2021 auditor's report combined with January 2022. If you remember, I had a positive COVID test at the last time we were giving a meeting or giving a report. That's why we have combined reports. In December, the city's expenses outpaced revenues for the month of December. It's very common for December and January for expenses to be higher than our revenues. We outlay a lot of things to close the year, and then we open the year and outlay a lot of our yearly payments. 
So we have 1.6 million in revenues, so 1.75 in expenses, which are much larger than usual. That's because we had large wastewater treatment plant project expenses, um, as that project is at full, full speed. I put on the report this time some of the top expenses for 2021 so that council could get a high level understanding of what um, much of the taxpayers' money go towards. So the largest expense, single expense for a city hall, pretty much expected at any city hall in the country, is payroll at 1.842 million. Next up, if anybody thinks their AEP bill is bad, our AEP bills for the year at $263,000.92 and eight pennies. Followed up by Columbia Gas at almost 15,000. Utility parts and repairs, <laughs> At 334,926, that includes the new water project that was just beginning at the end of the year. And water chemicals for the plan, 106,000. And our friends over at police and fire, including vehicle purchases at 119,873 cents um, of, of Nelsonville city money use. So all funds combined, we ended the year at 3.5. Five nine million general fund at six hundred sixty four thousand. Um, I won't read through all the fund balances that feels uh, necessary. Uh, I just wrote here the fund balances generally crept upwards in two thousand twenty one, and January two thousand twenty two, all our fund balances dropped a little bit, just as we outlaid a ton of our yearly annual expenses which kept uh, myself, Scott, and Judy very busy in January. We've got the two cash statement positions. And then I just wanted to end it with, we ended 2021, <clears throat> another crazy year in the world, another exciting year at Nelsonville and a year of change. So I wanted to put some of the things we accomplished uh, either in my office or financially related with the abatement program open and closed for the first full year successfully. The IRS penalties that we successfully negotiated away, clean city audit for the first time in years, the accounting and payroll software brought into the cloud, um, which prevents destruction of the data. Say if the river comes up like it keeps doing, we'll flood city hall, we no longer will be um, without books, which many cities would be. Fortunately, we've gotten to a place where our data is safe. We, of course, are getting utility software upgrades for free. We were going to be charged over 30000 but we found an old agreement from 2012 covering the purchase. Um, migrated purchasing online from all my department head friends here along the wall. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we ended the year with our last paper purchase. We were doing paper purchases from quote to approval to check writing. And we're now in all electronic process, uh, which is really exciting to me um, as an auditor. And employee portal, all employees access their pay stubs, W-2s, updates, submit time off requests online. Um, and we increase the city's percentage of paperless and online pay utility accounts from 10% to 19%. There's a final goal of 25% at the end of this year. So just some of the things we've been up to this year. And then with that, I take any questions. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank you. Free tonight. I know. Thank All you, right. Mr. Sappington. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Mayor's report. Full call. I believe that's going to be in our report later on. So, uh, citizens' comments. We have anything? Um, we need to approve. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, you're right. Yeah. Uh, motion to approve the auditor and treasurer's report. Yeah. So, second. Oh, sorry. I'll second to you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Comet? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Okay. Any citizen comments? Did anybody have anything? Is there anything, Scott, that you know from where it's Okay. All right. Uh, business and organizational comments. Okay. Uh, committee discussions. Uh, we had a planning and development committee meeting and we talked about 
designated outdoor re uh, refreshment area for those folks <coughs> at Dora. Dora. Um, and so Justin is going to be looking into that a little more. Um, see if we can proceed with getting that approved um, for an area that would basically encompass the square down Rocky Boot Way to um, Rocky to yeah, Starbreak Starbreak, yeah. Barbecue. The Elkwood, because it's a private club, wouldn't be included. Okay. Um, but so we're looking into that. I've also had a discussion about some homes um, for short term rentals, uh, you know, like uh, you know, rentals of less than 30 days. So I think like Airbnb, VRBOs, <coughs> Home Away, Craigslist ads, whatever those things would be. Um, so we're working on developing that. And then also talked about signage for each end of town, which we're working on to get um, since like the roundabout went in at this end and um, the new off ramps at that end, the signage has kind of disappeared or is not sufficient anymore. So we're working on figuring out exactly what we want, what we want to share at each end of town uh, to encourage people to come now that we have the High speed uh, charging stations for cars. That's something else that we're going to want to be able to like direct people to. So those are all things that we're working on. Anyone else? Yeah, utilities meeting and to discuss rates for the charging stations. Uh, can I help you all with the second thing? So we talked about the uh, new finalized plan that we're submitting for phase two as far as. We were able to add water lines to oh, stay right. underneath the 5K. We're actually at 5.2K. I sent out an email. The big addition is adding Franklin Street to that from Pine Grove down to Fort Street. And then we were able to add the lower part of John Street onto the end of Frederick. So that is a very nice addition um, for phase two water that's <coughs> due for submission in March. And then with all this high water storm strains, we, 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 uh, well, he discussed possibilities of uh, storm drain fees, but we need to check with the attorney to see if that's something that would have to be put on the ballot or if that's something that could go through a committee and then run to council. Just the legalities of it. That's it. Okay. All right. Department updates. Ms. Barber. All right, I guess I'll get first. Mine's really short and sweet, but don't be fooled. I've spent probably the majority of my time working on um, the properties to be demoed with the land bank. It's taken up a lot of my time, a lot of running, a lot of photographing, more documentation. We still have rental registrations that are coming in. Um, we're looking pretty good right now as far as folks that have paid for their rental registration. And we've had several new folks come in and sign up for rental registrations. Vacant building registrations are still coming in. Um, I have sent a, a letter out to landowners that have vacant buildings about the grant that we received, or well, we didn't receive the land bank received asking them if they wanted to partake in in that money um haven't received any information back yet and just doing a lot of odds and ends like civil service stuff setting for testing uh, with police and fire we've got a test tomorrow or wednesday um helping scott with grants you name it just little things so, that's it Okay. Any questions for Ms. Barber? Is there any kind of timeline on these buildings coming down? So, uh, Rick Wasserman informed me last, the beginning, no, the end of last week that we're looking at around July for a start. Um, and then we've got probably three land bank houses that's already been approved from 21 to be demoed in 22. Um, and then we've got <clears throat> a couple individuals that bought 
some land bank properties that had buildings on them, and they've, they've started demoing, which makes it really nice. So we're getting a lot of the blight cleaned up. <clears throat> Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Chief Fitch. Go um, start off with the mileage. Um, I don't have the mileage um, recorded. Checking. I cannot get that up there. We'll just roll it up. Verify it. Verify it. All right, so these are <clears throat> for Mayor's Court. I'll go with Mayor's Court first. So, so far for the month of February, we, we brought in this is paid fines $2,727. Um, there it is. All right, and for the year, that brings our total to 5305. We currently have 104 open mayor's court warrants. Again, that number is pretty high because we, you know, until a couple months ago, we never really started. Uh, my knowledge, it wasn't really necessarily over force. Um, however, that seems to be a regular. I can tell everybody that our jail bills are going to be they're elevated, um, probably much higher than have been in probably years past because we're making a lot more actual fiscal arrest and people being detained. Um, and the jail's been pretty accommodating lately. So a lot of more people spend the time actually in jail. Um, as far as the, the police department, uh, just calls for just basic service. We had 317 in February and there's up to the right your total calls for the year. Uh, 11 warrant arrests, 26 for the year. Um, those are just people we come in contact with that we have warrants for, not counting the other statistical arrests that we have if we're arresting them for charges. The general arrest is, was, as, was nine on uh, and 21 for the year. Traffic tickets, uh, incident reports, those are criminal uh, investigations that we're currently on. Um, and call record reports is one where we go and they're just called for a service that doesn't warrant a criminal investigation. Um, where we're assisting the public. Uh, Chief, can I ask a question? Sure. So you're saying this column 2020 is all of 2022, not like last February 2022. No, 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 no. It's just for it's oh 2022, okay. January, okay. February. Okay, I'm sorry. I was thinking 2021. I was yeah. like, wait, we had almost 50 percent of the calls. In yeah, February. it took me a second on that one too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was like. No, the, I was like, what is going on? <laughs> no, I mean, this was just, okay. that was the month of February, but that's okay. our total for the year. That's right. the year. Okay. I keep a running tally for okay. the year. Um, so some of the things here lately is, is Lexapol. I took, uh, I completed an orientation process, getting that implemented, and uh, it's going pretty well. It is kind of a slow process, but it's very tedious, but it's, it's going to be a really nice finished product. Um, I'm bouncing, they're bouncing ideas, sending me back what I'm asking, and and it's in compliance. So that's, you know, those are going to slowly be coming out and being implemented, uh, which again, all the officers will receive training and uh, sign off electronic signature that show that they've read the, re uh, and are familiar with and received training in the procedures. Um, last month we had, um, for external training, we had two officers go to the Reed School of Interview and Interrogation, which is probably the best interview and interrogation school in the, in the country. I think it's pretty well received as such. And we had an officer to attend leadership training. Um, GPS systems for the cruisers, they're being tested. They've been a little slow. There's been some technical difficulties. But uh, when when they have been up and running, they seem to be, you know, the data seems to be pretty telling. Um, hopefully what we're going to have once we get everything finalized, and if we elect or you elect to go forward with that and all the cruisers, uh, one of the things is going to be nice to how many, how many hours, you know, guys, uh, making sure no one's set stationary for too long periods of time. It's going to be nice to update the commuter village of Bookville, how many hours and times and dates and miles we've driven in, in within Bookville to show that we're giving them um, their service that they're asking for. Um, so that can be, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I wanted to thank the, we had a large uh, high profile trial last week. Many of you may have heard um, with Mr. Platt. 
He was found guilty and it was investigated by the Nelsonville Police Department. He was found guilty um, of involuntary manslaughter, and felony in the first degree, and child endangering an F3. He gets sentenced on March 22nd. Um, so maybe that'll help bring some closure to this Eli Spangler's family and friends. Uh, the Bookdale Patrol, uh, we've, we haven't started really writing a lot of tickets, but that's we. I feel like we're to the point now where that's, it's time to maybe change that a little bit. We've stopped a lot, a lot of cars and, and given primarily warnings unless it was just extremely egregious or they didn't have a driver's license. Uh, wanting to get people used to seeing cruisers in the area uh, at all hours of the day. So uh, tickets should uh, increase in Bookdale. Our calls for service went up a little last month. Uh, I still don't think a lot of the people is used to calling, um, but uh, it seems to be going well. I mean, I've stopped and talked to a lot of people. Uh, somebody, you know, they have different, various different uh, needs and wants, and most of it's traffic related. Um, but we have had calls for service and made a few arrests there. Uh, we took on the 17th of February, we took a civil service sergeant's examination for promotion. We had two officers that passed that, successfully passed that test. Officer KJ Tracy and Officer Devin Tolliver, both of them tested that. We got interviews tentatively set up for this Friday at 9 a.m. It's going to be conducted for those two to complete their scoring. At that point, after I can calculate all the scores, I'll submit that to Scott and I'm sure he'll pass that on to all of you and we'll make a recommendation based off whoever comes out on top. Um, there's an entry level, as Becky mentioned, a civil service test tomorrow here in this room at 5.30. So that's to create a eligibility list for future positions that may or may not become available. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to have that. We haven't been able to have a, an actual on-call list for a while. So I'll be glad to get that set up. And that's all I've got. Any questions for Chief Fitch? So I've got some questions, Chief. So the I was gonna ask about the question uh, about Book and the number of calls of service. Do you know how many of those have come from local area? I do, but I don't have that data. Yeah. I, I was wondering how <clears throat> how many that, you know, that may have affected us uh, by. Um, the GPS and the cruisers, do you think that's something, you, you mentioned that there's some technical <clears throat> difficulties. I mean, those bugs are we can work through. You think it's... Yeah, it's been more on uh, T-Mobile's part to this point. Okay. Um, they had... The guy that was supposed to be working with us, he's changed. He's been he took some time off, and we finally got a hold of him today. And actually, we got a new guy. We're going to assign a new representative tomorrow. So I'm trying to. I think that might help us a little bit. So that you're hoping the data would yeah. be a little bit. Okay. But I, I mean, from what I've seen, it, it's very helpful. I think there's a lot of positives to it. I really do. I think for for what I consider a minimal amount of money, there's a lot of a lot of moderate, um, you know, monitoring that you can do with it. Uh, things like that, speeds, idle time, you know, obviously where somebody's at. There's an officer safety element involved to it to where officers, you know, if they're not able to be reached by, you know, radio or by phone, uh, then we have a new location of where they're at and we can go right to their cruiser at least. Um, again, there's lots of things. There's, there's a notification for instant braking and things like that where you'd probably assume that a crash had occurred. Uh, again, speeds, one of the things that <clears throat> for obvious reasons that I, I monitor uh, and we we do get some calls on is uh, responding to emergency calls when running lights and sirens. You'll be able to very easily determine how fast somebody was going, you know, and where their speeds was. And you know, I've seen I've personally been involved and sometimes people will say that they we was going exceedingly fast. Well I was involved in it and I know we wasn't. Then there's times that we did get calls and I thought we was probably going too fast. So it looks that way, lights and sirens in the moment, but this way we'll be able to accurately, if somebody has a complaint, I mean, obviously it can be looked at immediately and we start monitoring that and start checking in with the guys to make sure they're responding responsibly. And then are you gonna be pre presenting uh, to Bookville then, like some statistics of you know calls and mm -hmm. outcomes yeah. of those? And yeah, we, we've got them broken down over there, but what we was waiting to do is, because there's been minimal, like I said, there's been, you could, there's only been like maybe I want to say six or eight tickets, and the calls of service have been minimal. Um, but again, the reason there's been so there's been a lot of traffic stops over there, but there hasn't been a lot of tickets issued, and that was by design. I didn't think we should do that. I, I mean, again, Bookville don't want to be a speed trap no more than Nelsonville does. So um, I thought that was the right thing to do. Uh, 
there will be an increase. We're not going to start targeting everybody. But there'll be an increase in tickets. They'll start going up. And, and the GPS will allow you to, to know how much time we're spending over there. That way yeah. you can present to them and say, so, but, and I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to present what to they're you. getting for their, yeah. their dollars. And you guys as well. That way, if there's any controversy, as we're spending too much time here, or too much time there, or uh, from, from an administrative standpoint, for me, it, yeah, I can identify if people spending too much time in the office, if they're spending too much time stationary. You know, so there's some administrative functions to it too that I really like to have the availability. Um, but again, the speeds was another one that I can appreciate, you know. And if I understand correctly, then the way you're talking about that, um, most importantly, then we will track mileage then with that GPS, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, there will be a mileage. Sorry. I mean, if you guys, you guys will have, you can feel free to contact me personally and I'll give you yeah. the mileage. There it only works if you compare it to 2013. So you, and and also you can, you can make sure that the BP is secure yes. at all times. Yeah, right. yes. Madison Street. Yeah, yeah. Madison Street. Well, that's what we have to tell with this cold. There's a blind spot in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I have a question for you. So, yes, sir. I noticed that we have a, we've been doubling up in the cruiser, and I think that's great. I think, you know, safety and numbers. Uh, I always like the fact that two people go to our call. But is that something that you're uh, often now, or? On some shifts, well, there's 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 advantages to it. One with uh, the price of fuel, mm -hmm. it's always beneficial to try to cut back a little bit on on some fuel costs. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain amount I want the guys to to work to ride together. I think there's a lot of benefits to it, but I don't want them doing it all the time, especially uh, at nights and things for response. If you get a second call, then I want people to be able to respond and break yeah. off there and things like that. But there's times where I'm encouraging it because some of the officers, it's almost like some additional training. You've got other officers that's got strengths, and I asked them to work with other officers on some of the like the investigative techniques and skills. There's some that's a little more proactive in traffic, so they're kind of helping their partner be a little more, come a little more proactive for traffic, and some is more narcotics related, and they ride with somebody. So kind of as a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, if you will. Um, there's been a lot of statistics shown that it's beneficial. Um, there's a few little downsides. Like I said, you've got less cruisers out, so you got it's hard to break off and go separate ways. But a lot of the times when they're doing that on day shift and stuff, I'm usually always here, so there's always somebody else that can go another direction. And uh, like today, we had three officers out plus myself. So we're trying to beef up where we're getting the most calls, and primarily the busiest 12 hours by far is from 10 a to 10 p. Um, Actually, 10 to P to 8 P is our primary calls for service. A large percentage of that comes in during those those times, um, that 10 hour stretch. So I'm trying to beef up patrol in those areas. I, I do like the two officers. The cruiser. Yeah, there's some advantages, and I think it, it's a good chance for for the officers, like I said, to help one another out if one of them might be a little stronger than one area than another. So there's pros. I just don't want to do it all the time right. because I don't want somebody to be able to say, well, there goes the one cruiser that's out tonight. Right, 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 right. So, all right. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Sure, get that mileage on there. Um, <clears throat> all right, we are to second reading ordinances. Ordinance 11 22. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to apply for, accept, and enter into an Ohio EPA water supply revolving loan account agreement on behalf of the city of Nelsonville. For construction of the phase two water system improvement project and designating a ded dedicated repayment source for the loan. Okay. Any council discussion? Okay. To adopt. So moved. Second. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Bush? Yes. Mr. Comment? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. All right. Uh, ordinance 12 22, second reading. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to apply for, accept, and enter into an Ohio EPA water pollution control loan fund agreement on behalf of the city of Nelsonville for construction of phase three regional collection system improvement project and designating a dedicated repayment source for any loan funds that may be required. Any council discussion on this matter? Motion to adopt. I'll, so, I'll second. Thank you. 
Mr. Boots? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. And who are you? Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Mr. Yes. Me. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know, I know. Really about an eighth of the person. Um, <laughs> all righty. Ordinance is on first reading. Ordinance 15 22. I need someone to introduce it, please. Thank you. An ordinance approving change order for VFW lift station replacement contract and authorizing city manager Scott Frank to sign and authorize said change order and declaring an emergency. Whereas the city of Nelsonville has entered into a contract VFW lift station replacement. Whereas several items on, of the contract need adjusted in order to complete the contract. Whereas this change order changes the fee paid to AEP by Pam Construction Incorporated in order to upgrade the services from 240 to 480 volts, which is more efficient and is needed for the increased pump capacity. And whereas the change will increase the contract price by $2,468.24 and is summarized as attached in Exhibit 1. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, County, Ohio, as follows. The City of Nelsonville hereby approves change order for the VFW lift station replacement contract as described in Exhibit 1. This change order changes the fee paid to AEP by Camp Construction Incorporated in order to upgrade the service from 240 volts to 480 volts, which is more efficient and is needed for the increased pump capacity. The contract price will increase by $2,468.44. City Manager Scott Frank shall have the authority to enter into, accept, and or authorize chain, contract change order for VFW lift station replacement as shown in Exhibit 1. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Article 4, Section 4.09 through 4.11 as an emergency in the operation of the city government and is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace health, safety, morals, or welfare of the city, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Duly enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules of 28th day of February, 2022. Any, any council discussion on this matter? Yes, I have a question. So was this uh, change, uh, was that our request or was that... Recommended by our engineer. It, yeah, it came in second. So originally they found 240 pumps, but uh, 480 came along later, and the work did a process of trying to switch as many as we can over to 480, uh, just because they have a lot more low end torque. Single page three. <clears throat> okay. They have any timeline on that? Uh, we should start construction uh, late April, beginning of May. Cool. All right. Motion to suspend. Yes, sir. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Luke? Yes. Motion to adopt. So moved. I'll second. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. I get points for the Well, I get an extra bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Ordinance. You're to do that election now. Mm -hmm. All right. Ordinance uh, sixteen twenty two. I need someone to introduce it, please. I'll introduce it. Thank you. An ordinance adopting change order for water system improvements meter contract and authorizing city manager Scott Frank to sign and authorize said change order and declaring it an emergency. Whereas the city of Nelsonville has entered into a contract with water system systems improvement meter, whereas several items of the contract need adjusted in order to complete the contract, whereas the change will increase the contract price by $34,904.16 and is summarized as attached in Exhibit 1. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. 
the City of Nelsonville hereby approves change order for the water systems improvements <laughs> meter contract as described in Exhibit 1. The contract price will be increased by a sum of $34,904.16. Specifically, this change order A, addition one, item 21, new meter pit relocated from concrete driveway and installed with setter, AMI meter, ring and lid complete due to concrete driveway location for an additional price of $2,019.56. Replaces lids, rings to accommodate odd sizes encountered in the field with the purpose of standardization through the service area for an additional price of $31,984.60. Poly tube for line repairs at an additional price of $900. City Manager Scott Frank shall have the authority to enter into, accept, and or authorize the contract change order for water systems improvement meter contract as shown in Exhibit 1. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure for Pursuant to Article 4, Section 4.09 through 4.11 as an emergency in the operation of the government of the city government and is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, safety, morals, or welfare of the city. And this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. To be enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules on the 28th day of February 2022. Okay. Any council discussion on this matter? Yeah, I've got questions again. Sorry if, um, I'm, since I missed the utility meeting, if this was discussed there. So, uh, is this, are these the folks that are going around and changing out our meters currently? Mm -hmm. So, what a lot of this is, is just, uh, for example, the concrete one. The uh, gentleman, he had poured several years ago, he poured a brand new concrete driveway. And it's not feasible to go in there and change any of his. So what we're going to do is put a new pit beside his driveway in the grass. So we're going to reroute a new line through the street and then back to the new pit. So we don't cut a hole and it is new con it's cheaper than doing the concrete. It'll tie on the old service line. It's already up under the driveway. It's in book. So um it would he did it before we owned any of it. Um and then uh, the tubing, for example, um, there's gray air. So the customer is responsible for their water line from the meter to the house. Well, in Bookdo, where they were changing out the setters, the pits were changed mainly in Bookdo. Not There's a couple in Nelsonville, but mainly in Bookdo. And the galvanized line, you can literally walk across the dirt and break a galvanized line, depending on how fragile it is. If they're out there and they're changing a, a pit and right. it starts leaking, technically it's on the customer. I wasn't comfortable with that. So with all the customers, we worked out a deal with them. Usually we ended up giving them the line and uh, they would end up changing it. So that's what the line is on there. And then um, $34,000 one, what was that one? That was the lids and rings. Oh, the lids and rings. That's just because the... Uh, uh, Nice we, we've got three different sizes. Yeah, yeah so this is what was in Nelsonville originally three different sizes. So now we're going to all everything's identical, so we don't have to stock as much as different sizes, all the different stuff. Everything's going to be the same, so we can keep minimal on hand, and that way we got it if we need it. Those are requests that we did to standardize what we have versus sticking with what was there. Any more? Okay. Motion to suspend. So moved. Second. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Dopey? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Okay. Motion to adopt. So moved. I'll second. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. All right, ordinance 17 22. Need someone to introduce it, please. I'll introduce. It. Thank you. An ordinance accepting mobile home gifted to the city by owner Rockley Properties LLC and authorizing the city to place the mobile home up for auction and declaring an emergency. Whereas Rockley Properties LLC has 
gifted a mobile home located on city property to the city of Nelsonville. Whereas the city would like to accept the gifted mobile mobile home from Rockley Properties LLC and express sincere gratitude for their thoughtfulness, kindness, and generosity. Whereas the city will immediately place the mobile home up for auction. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville at this county, Ohio, as follows. The City of Nelsonville accepts the generous gift of the mobile home from Rockley Properties, LLC, as demonstrated in the title attached and incorporated to this ordinance as Exhibit 1. The City Manager shall have the authority to take any necessary steps to transfer the title to the City. The City Manager shall have the authority to place the mobile home up for auction. The starting bid shall be $250 and the mobile home shall be sold as is. The buyer of the mobile home shall bear the all costs of removing the mobile home from the city. The buyer shall remove the property within 30 days of purchase. The city auditor shall have the authority to accept the purchase price from buyer and place it in the appropriate fund pursuant to law or as approved by city council. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Article 4. Sections 4.09 through 4.11 as an emergency <coughs> in the operation of the city government and is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, safety, morals, or welfare of the city. And this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Duly enacted by council on first reading after the suspension of the rules the 28th day of February 2022. Any council discussion on this matter? Or is this uh, Robo Homework? So this mobile home is on Back Street, right next to our list station. So we've been trying to get this thing moved for over a year. Um, it's been there for quite some time. Um, the lot that uh, the lot that it sits on is only 50 feet wide, and the trailer is 80 feet long. Um, it's sitting on two of our lots, um, 18 feet on one side and two feet on another lot of ours, and. Uh, they, the property owner sold the trailer to Rockley Properties up north, and he has been unsuccessful finding someone to tow it north to where he was wanting to take it. And um, we were in the process of going through and pulling it through the court to get rid of it. And um, he just contacted us literally the same uh, day we were talking to the court. And uh, we told him what we were doing, and he just asked if he could donate it to us. And he said, well, yes, you can donate it to us. And he overnighted us the title, and we had it the next day. So that's the easiest way for us to get rid of it. So literally, it's sitting right behind my daughter's house. How's the auction process work? Um, it, it's, so we do it a couple different ways. This one, um, so sometimes we use the online auction, which works pretty good for us. Um, it's a, uh, what is that? Deals. Yeah, Gov deals. And uh, we have really good luck on there. And then sometimes we just put them on uh, Facebook and do silent auction. So you just bring your bids and we'll come in here just like a, bidding a job and open up the envelopes and whoever's the highest bid wins. Cool. Cool. Usually it's a little bit of kids. Mm, oh, kids. But it's, yeah, the other way around. So I don't really. Can you mention if someone buys it, it cannot stay in the city? Oh, yes. And it doesn't stay in the city because it doesn't meet any of the requirements to stay in the city. So it's got to leave. too old. Okay. Motion to suspend. Um, motion to suspend. Second. <laughs> got heavy results there, didn't you? A little bit. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. I have one other quick question on that, though. It, are there, is there services attached to the trailer that need to be? No, he actually had it all disconnected. Okay. He put the axles underneath of it, all the underpinning, like it's ready to hook up. They're going to have to cut down a tree or two, but it is ready to hook onto and drag out. They even had it all prepped and ready to go. And it's city property that it's sitting on? Uh, so there's three lots that it's sitting on. Minutes. Two of the three lots is city. Okay. So the trees that then need to be cut down, is that on city property? Um, I have to double check. Okay. I think so. And, and the city's 
granting permission if they need to cut those down to make that oh, happen? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, we may just go cut them down for them if it's on our property. So they're not anything that Nan would be upset about. Yeah, well, I just, yeah, I just want to make sure too that the that city's you know sure. absolving them of any wrongdoing there. Absolutely. In fact, if, uh, if they are ours, Jason will take care of them. Thanks, Jason. She needs all training day. <laughs> all right. Okay. So we are giving a motion to amend the agenda to add ordinances 18 22, 19 22, 20 22, and 20 22. The resolutions are on there. They're all on there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will make that motion to amend the agenda to add those ordinances. Second. Second. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. So, ordinance 18-22. I need someone to introduce it, please. I will. Thank you. An ordinance amending the 2022 appropriations ordinance to appropriate the unappropriated balance to the following. The sum of two thousand dollars from unappropriated balance to number three hundred fund park and rec league expenses line item three zero zero dash two five zero dash eight zero zero one zero fund Nelsonville York Junior High baseball team and declaring an emergency. Whereas the appropriations need amended to appropriate money from the unappropriated balance to the number three hundred fund park and rec league. Line item 300-250-80010 for the Nelsonville York Junior High Baseball Team. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. The 2022 Appropriations Ordinance is amended to appropriate from the unappropriated balance to the number 300 fund Park and Rec League Line item 300-250-80010 for the Nelsonville York Junior High Baseball Team the following. The sum of $2,000 from the unappropriated balance to number 300 fund park and rec league expense line item 300-250-67596 fund junior high baseball team. Public appropriation Appropriated balance is decreased by said amount. The total appropriations in the 300 fund park and rec league line item 300-250-80010 Nelsonville, New York junior high baseball team are increased by said amount. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to article four, section 4.09 through 4.11 as an emergency in the operation of the city government and is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, safety, morals, or welfare of the city, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. So enacted by council on first reading on the suspension of the rules the 28th day of February, 2022. Okay, any council discussion on this matter? This is for the junior high baseball team. Is this something we typically do? Yes. Yeah, you're in the meeting, are you? Yeah, we've done this for the last three, four years. It's like the one <coughs> sport. sport that the it's the one like sport, sport. the school doesn't sponsor. It's the two yeah, yeah it's middle softball middle school, and baseball. Middle school um baseball and softball, they don't sponsor, so the city is taking care of it. I'll move uh to approve the suspend motion to suspend. Second. Um, Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yeah. Mr. Taylor? I'll vote again. I'll vote again. I'll vote again. I'll vote again. All right. Uh, motion to adopt. Second. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? No. No. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. 
And just for clarity, this is uh, for the baseball hands on programs. This is just for the baseball, but we're softball sure that we did it for the softball. If they need it, we said we would do another appropriation, but they haven't yes. stepped forward. Yes, we will do both. Yeah. I just want to make sure that people understand we'll support both. Yes. So. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. Yes. So, and this should cover. There was there was a little bit left over, but they should this should cover them for at least this year. They have to buy all new catcher's equipment because the stuff that we bought is not void, you know, batting helmets and everything else. Okay, uh, ordinance 20-22. Can someone introduce it, please? I think 19-22. Oh, 19-22. I'm sorry. I'll introduce 19-22. There we go. An ordinance authorizing city manager Scott Frank to take all steps necessary to scrap old water meter parts, water meter lids, broken fire, fire hydrant, and water valves, and miscellaneous metal, and declaring an emergency. Whereas the city of Nelsonville is in possession of several old water meter parts, old water meter lids, broken fire hydrant, and water valve, and miscellaneous metal, whereas the city would like to scrap all of those items. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. The City of Nelsonville hereby authorizes City Manager Scott Frank to take all legal steps necessary to scrap several old water meter parts, old water meter lids, broken fire hydrant and water valve, and miscellaneous metal. City Manager Scott Frank shall take all steps, legal steps necessary to scrap several old water meter parts, old water meter lids, broken fire hydrant, and water valve, and miscellaneous metal. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Article 4, Sections 4.09 through 4.11 as an emergency in the operation of the city government and necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, safety, morals, or welfare of the city, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect on its adoption. So I'm enacted by council on first reading of suspension of the rules, 28th day of February, 2022. Any council discussion in this matter? Okay. Uh, motion to suspend. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Pelkey? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Okay. Motion to adopt. Second. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Conway? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Almost done. Almost done. Let's see the end of the light. Um, ordinance 20-22. Can someone introduce it, please? Oh, shoot. Thank you. An ordinance authorizing city manager Scott Frank to take all the steps necessary to sell old functioning water meter lids and to sell old concrete precast sewer structures and declaring it an emergency. Whereas the city of Nelsonville is in possession of several functioning water meter lids and old concrete precast sewer structures. Whereas the city would like to sell all of, all of those items. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. The City Manager, the City of Nelsonville hereby authorizes City Manager Scott Frank to take all legal steps necessary to sell several functioning water meter lids and old concrete precast sewer structures. City Manager Scott Frank shall take all legal steps necessary to sell several functioning water meter lids and old concrete precast sewer structures. The city auditor shall place the revenues from the sales in the appropriate fund and line item. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Article 4, Section 4.09 to 4.11 as an emergency in the operation of the city government and is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, peace, health, safety, morals, or welfare of the city. And this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules the 28th day of February 2022. All right. Any council discussion on this matter? Um, do we have a uh, fire in mind already? No, sir. It's just one of those that uh, for our old plastic water meters that are part of it in the lids, we're going to contact some of our neighbors that use those parts still and see if they have any need for them and uh, go from there. And then the precast structures. Um, 
again, just folks in the area that are using them, see if they have any need for it. And if they don't, do we have a means of? Um, we can put them on the bid site that we mentioned earlier, Gov. Uh, Gov deals. Yeah, Gov deals, and see if we can get any traction there. As far as all the brass goes, um, our uh, community service folks are cleaning that for us, so we're able to scrap that at top dollar. Motion to suspend. So moved. Okay. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Hunnett? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Dell? Yes. Mr. Delphi? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Here's the document. Okay. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Delphi? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Three. Just, three. Just three more, and there's no double pages. Okay. All right. Resolution 2267. Need someone to introduce it, please. I'll be happy to introduce the paddling resolution. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Taylor. A resolution authorizing the city manager to file an application for paddling enhancement grant. And to take all necessary steps to complete said application. Whereas the state of Ohio, through the Department of Natural Resources, Waterways, Safety Fund Administrator, Financial Assistance for Public Voting Access, and whereas the city of Nelsonville desires financial reimbursement under the Paddling Enhancement Grant Program. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio. The city of Nelsonville approves the filing of filing an application for paddling grant. Paddling Enhancement Grant Financial Assistance. Yeah, Scott Frank, City Manager, is hereby authorized and directed to file and execute an application with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources to provide all information and documentation required to be eligible for possible financial assistance. The City of Nelsonville agrees that it has and will obligate the funds required to satisfy to satisfactorily complete the project under the terms and conditions of the cooperative agreement if the project is accepted for financial assistance. We will enact by council on first reading on suspension of the rules on the 28th day of February, 2022. Okay. Yeah, we just first reading, it's a resolution. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, thank you. First. <clears throat> okay. So, first of all, nobody's getting free paddles. Say that. Um, so, motion. Any council discussion on this matter? Okay. Motion to adopt. So maybe. Second. <laughs> I will. Um, Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. Yes. Okay. This one. All right. It's a great name. We should apply for it every year. Yes. <laughs> All right. Resolution 2268. Can someone introduce it, please? Thank you. A resolution approving participation in Region 10 governance structure under the Ohio One Mem Memorandum of Understanding. Okay, um, this, this will be filled in after the yes. motion. Okay. Yep. Or as the city of Nelsonville is a local government that has adopted and approves the One Ohio Memorandum of Understanding, which establishes a mechanism to disperse settlement proceeds from opioid lit litigation into Ohio's communities to help abate the opioid crisis, including allocations of local government and regions through the statewide foundation. And whereas this jurisdiction is a participant in Region 10, as established by the memorandum, and whereas pursuant to the memorandum, each region shall create their own governance structure, so it ensures all local governments have input and equitable representation regarding regional decisions, including uh, representation on the statewide foundation board and selection of projects to be funded from the region's regional share. And whereas regions 
staff have the responsibility to, the responsibility to make submissions regarding the allocation of funds to projects that will equitably serve the needs of the entire region. And whereas it is found that the local government structure attached here to as exhibit A ensures all local governments in this region have input and mm -hmm. equitable representation regarding regional decisions under the memorandum. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, subject to and effective on the concurrence of all local governments in Region 10, this legislative body hereby approves and enters into a regional government's agreement, governance agreement attached here to as exhibit A. It is found and determined that all former actions of this legislative body relating to the adoption of this resolution were adopted in an open meeting and that all deliberations that resulted in such formal action were in meetings open to the public in compliance with all legal requirements. This resolution is hereby declared to be an emergency measure necessary for the preservation of the public peace, health, welfare, and safety. The reason for the emergency is to ensure prompt pursuit of funds to assist in abating the opioid epidemic in Ohio. And duly enacted by council on first reading the 28th day of February, 2022. All right, any council discussion on this matter? Is this related to the big settlements that came through this week? Um, I don't believe so. So the county's starting to put together, and we've only had one meeting, and um, I don't even fully understand it myself, but for us to be a part of it, this is how we become a part of it. And you know, so follow the resolution in order to be able to file an application. Yes. Yeah. I wish I could tell you more. It's a secret squirrel. <laughs> it's so secret, I don't even know. Okay. Um, motion to adopt. So then, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Clement? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Dunford? Yes. All right. Um, not a good idea. So we are to the city manager's report. Resolution 29 was a duplicate. So do not worry about that. Um, 20, so city manager, you have the floor, Mr. Frank. Already. I'll try to go through it pretty quick. <clears throat> Um, the first thing we finalized our paving. So the four streets that we're going to do St. John Street, and we're on the schedule for the middle of April to the end of April. That's the report. Mm. Oh, okay. He's giving me a weird look. So. Oh. It's just the corners, corners, I guess. St. St. John Street. Um, they're wrapping up now with uh, Columbia Gas is up there, so that'll be the last one. So the water line's done, gas line's done. So it'd be nice when it's finished. Frank Street, uh, we are replacing the two-inch water line up there. Jason, these guys went through today, made an input or made sure we have all the parts to do it and getting everything ordered that we need so they can go replace that. Clinton Street, um, we have to replace or repair the whole top left. Not a big deal. We'll take care of that right before they come in. And then at the very end of Contner. Uh, we replaced the two-inch water line up there last year, just past where they repaired Mill Street. Speaking of Mill Street, um, they will, uh, it is supposed to be repaired, meaning the uh, curbs widened out and uh, all the landscaping taken care of by the end of April. So as far as I know, everything's on track for that still to happen. If something changes, I'll let you know, but uh, that's still on track. And that's, that's it for paving this year. Um, as far as actually the paving goes, the rest of the budget will be spent on patching. I have no intention of sealing anything this year. I want to wait another year to see how the ceiling holds up before I spend any more money on it. And then uh, we are going to paint, uh, make sure to put some paint on Columbus Street. Somebody wants streets, Columbus Street hash marks. So the Columbus Street hash marks the parking on Columbus Street. Um, it's taken care of. And uh, like that'll take care of the streets for the most part. And then switching over to grants, everything got submitted to AP to get reimbursed for the uh, chargers. They're out there now. If you guys haven't seen them, cruise on by. Last I saw, one of them was still 
uh, showing unavailable that was on the charge point side of it. They're just working on some programming with it. Uh, right now they're free. Uh, the next meeting, you guys will have your ordinance to, uh, to officially set the rate. Uh, as we talked about in utility meeting, uh, we talked about doing an introductory rate as free, which is pretty common with these things, usually for a three to six month trial, just to try and garner some interest in them and get people to come off the beaten path for them. So uh, we will get that at the next meeting. And then um, hopefully, uh, did you get that curve? No. And uh, we did learn some interesting things. Uh, so there's some citizens working on it now. Um, the house, if you're looking at them directly to the right, the White House, it's not the original house, but the spot right there was the first house in Ohio to have electricity. So oddly enough, we put the electric chargers right there beside it. And there's some pretty cool history along with this. And so folks are putting uh, put together some history and possibly put together maybe a little plaque to put to cover up those nasty shutoffs that they put right in the middle, but maybe to create some sort of touristy attraction. Like one of the historical uh, markers. Yes, sir. Uh, I've, I've seen it suggested that we put up billboards. How, how do electric vehicle people find out about this charge station? So the way electric like vehicle charge, the, what's that? It doesn't happen. They all have apps in them, or uh, you know this, you know, car guy. Why don't you you explain it better than I can? All these set you, you up for the you know, you know, alley oop, and yeah, I mean, all you have to do is I threw you a softball. I've heard you coach softball. Well, I've tried. You send the girls home crying. He <laughs> definitely doesn't make my daughter run so, laps when she's late. He drove there. Yeah, He's like, I know, mine too. And uh, <laughs> so. For everybody at home that did ask about the advertising, yes, all these EV vehicles, they have uh, software inside the vehicles or folks use a phone, but they plan their trips if they're going on long trips before they even leave the house that shows all these uh, charging stations so they know where they're going to stop before they even leave. The benefit to uh, what we have versus what a lot of other people have is our chargers uh, charge faster than what most other folks have out there. For example, Athens has a level three charger next to their swimming pool. There's not much to do around the swimming pool. There's an Applebee's and a steak and shake, um, which is cool. I mean, I, and then, uh, you know, we have Rocky and then we have uh, the mine and uh, Fulbrooks, you know, so hopefully we get more. Um, what? Suda Bakery. Suda Bakery, maybe someday in wine bar. And uh, so then, um, so that's the idea, basically, is to get it there, come and they have their stuff ahead of time, right? So, and then the apps have the stuff uh, are all planned out. But what I found out is a lot of these apps, I don't know about the cars, I've never been in an EV vehicle or electric vehicle, but uh, a lot of them leave reviews like Yelp. So uh, ideally, we want to have positive reviews, and um, we know what the building looks like behind it now, and we all know in this room that it's being renovated, and it's gonna look really nice when it's done. However, right now, the first pictures probably aren't the best, especially with the mud. The Lord knows the curve, right? And uh, so, especially after we get it doctored up, the, the curb, the landscaping, and then when the new porch gets put on the front, we put a nice sign on there, you know, we can all go create and pretend to have EVs and put our own, ad, or put our own reviews on there and get it bumped up, but uh, that's the plan anyways. So, moving on. Sewer plant, the new sewer plant's on track. Um, we're still anticipating at least a two month delay, but it hasn't hit us yet. And uh, the VFW lift station, we already talked about that late April, beginning of May, starting phase three of uh, the sewer bid slid a week. It was supposed to be this week due, but we just talked about it tonight and slid it to next week, hoping to get more bidders. We cannot get anybody to bite. $2.7 million right now is just too small of a fish. So, uh, it's just too small of a fish right now. It's phase three. It's phase three. Yep. And what you guys, so just to, just as a reminder, so phase three is 100% grant unless we have to go up. And what you guys passed tonight in an ordinance is authorizing us to go to a loan if needed. Um, we're not convinced that, we're not convinced that the money's wrong. Um, in fact, there's, it's pretty, there's a lot of buffer in there, believe it or not. And uh, it's just everybody's so busy uh, with bigger fish. Um, 
Uh, thank you for paddle paddling the paddle grant. It's due tomorrow. Uh, for everybody at home that doesn't know what that is, I know everybody here got an email explaining. I think it was on Etsy. <laughs> yes, Etsy. Um, Etsy. Uh, it's no synthetic stuff. This is natural wood. Um, red tail. Red tail. Red tail. Yeah. Uh, for the, it's really hard. I wish we had a render. A visual. A visual. Yes. A visual. Um, that is tough. The. I'm here all week. Yes. The and old sewer plant. And there it is. The old sewer plant is going to, you know, essentially be two purposes. Well, maybe more. Who knows? Oh, but crazy. it'll have a uh, kayak ramp entering the river uh, with ADA access, uh, concrete ramp, parking area, eventually lights, um, uh, cameras, and then, of course, very large dog park with a uh, administrative type. Well, it'll actually just be a bathroom and a storage building for equipment. It was also ADA access along the way. So that whole area is going to be turned into recreation. And um, this grant here is just to get the concrete for the ramp for the most part and the concrete for the ADA parking spaces and to put the base in for the parking lot. It's not even going to be the parking lot. It'll just be the gravel base and that $75,000. And that's gone. No, that didn't go very far. A good start, though. It is. It's a great start. It is a great start. So, and that's due tomorrow. Uh, what I don't know is if we'll be able to apply for a second one to expand it and make it better, which would be interesting if we can do it again next year. Um, the another grant that's due at the end of uh, this month, meaning uh, next month, March, flood mitigation grant. What we're planning on putting forward is upgrading our flood pumps, which the Monroe Street flood pumps, what that will include is a new concrete base and elevated platform and actually adding a second or adding a backup generator to that one as the primary pump and then changing out the pumps at the uh, pump station near the old city pool and adding a connector for generators there. So not actually putting a generator, but just adding a connector. Um, we learned two high water events ago that uh, the power just goes out too easy with the Monroe station for as often as it happens not to have a backup generator there. And it doesn't need to be a very big one for those two motors. So we're just gonna have one put in there. Um, the Hawking River water line should be up for bid in April. So that will hopefully be underway by May or, eight, or May, June timeframe. Phase two water is due in March that we talked about that briefly. The, the addition to that was the water line on Franklin Street and the John Street, which are two panes. Uh, Franklin Street doesn't so much give us a whole lot of hassle, but it does have the lead joints. In it. So that'll be a nice uh, addition to get that out of there. And that's due at the end of March as well. Nature Works 2.0 is coming about. Um, unless there's any objection, um, I know I was planning on pushing it toward the dog park folks, but uh, if there's any other ideas out there, of course, that's for everybody, you know, for you guys to decide. Um, speaking of nature works, I didn't, Justin was the only one I heard back from as far as the playground equipment goes. Did you get the fire truck? That's AEP. They don't buy, by the way, they don't buy asphalt, in case you haven't heard, um, but they, they might buy a fire chip. <laughs> You stay out of the pirate ship, Corey. You got the bid opening Friday, too. Not this Friday, next Friday. It's a little week. Okay. Again? Yeah. Uh, so, are we not, are we, am I just buying playground equipment? Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm following Mr. Boots. Good deal. It works, man. Uh, $2,000 grants, one's for the signs that uh, Elizabeth was talking about. Then we have a PEP grant that we apply for that anyone part of heads can go get. The eight inch water main on Watkins Street that was had the intersection closed was our big leak. That is in fact the one that uh, we've been losing all water out of for the last six weeks. And the utilities department has uh, been looking for leaks. We've been calling it. We have a, an appointment with a company to come in they listen for leaks all over. They'll actually drill the road to find it and pinpoint the leaks for us. We're getting to that point where we're going to start finding and we're going to reduce the jug of water over there. 
I want to get down to somewhere between 10 and 15%. Right now we're at 57, 58%. So um, with that eight inch fix, we're probably in the 40s right now, which is less than that now, but uh, down to 10 or 15% is where we need to be. The boys have been patching, um, doing a really good job there. Our salt has been replenished, so we're clear full of salt again. I spent all the money on it, so um, all that's gone. If we have another event, we'll need more money, but if not, then we're good to go. Um, some of you may have seen the dust cloud today and know what that means. Yeah. Trying to clean up uh, the dirt, doing the best we can with that. But uh, as you know, aside from a brush and a skid steer, our only option was the sweeper for that. The meters, we talked about that. They're still going in. Um, still uh, punching out a lot of bugs with that, working with customers every way possible. But uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of errors. Let's see. Right now we have three guys in uh, water classes. So two are in water treatment, one. Um, hopefully uh, one of those will be interested in moving up to take over the water plant eventually. They eventually gotta get to water treatment three. And then right now I got one in wastewater one. So that's Zach, our new guy. And uh, hopefully he sticks around for the long haul. We'll eventually move into Sean's place in the long term and take over our wastewater uh, plant in the long run. So I know I've talked to him, you know, long, I mean, granted it's going to take him five years to get certified, but uh, long term he seems to be interested in that kind of uh, goal. We did have an overflow at the sewer plant with all the water. Um, it was a ding from the EPA. It was an electrical issue that shorted out inside the panel. We've already fixed it and taken uh, measures to make sure it doesn't happen again. We, um, we owe our answer back. It's just a matter of finalizing the response. We didn't get fined or anything like that, but we did get a nasty gram. And then um, today we had the camera guys in town do, looking for I&I. &I. Jason had a good idea of um, looking for it. So for folks at home, that's water infiltrating our sewer. Um, groundwater we found on Back Street. We have a brand new, uh, lift station and when the river actually came out of the banks up into the park the brand new lift station could not keep up with the water which doesn't make any sense and because uh, it should have been able to pump it all out with ease and uh, we were down there he called in the uh, sewer guy with the tractor and found three or four major leaks that uh, storm water is leaking and into our sewer they so found an eight inch line was we have twice. no records of right with two major, with one major hole in the top of it, uh, spewing water in, and we suspect it's going directly into a storm or running straight towards the top state of the flood pump. So we got to make uh, arrangements for him to come back and finish that line out. And uh, and then he did find a busted manhole that was allowing ground groundwater to come into it. What about the back of Kaler's house? Did he tractor that? Did that go into a manhole? Because I saw he moved the grade. They can't get in that. Okay. It goes somewhere. But uh, yeah, they can't get um, did he go down back street? Was they there anything down there? Manhole. Was there problems down there too? Couldn't find the manhole. Okay. So, anyways, we found major infiltration points and we're going to get those addressed um, pretty quickly. And that way we can um, at least button those up and see if it makes any impact when the water comes up next time. But uh, this summer, with all the construction slowing down, the new construction is basically going to bump to probably beginning of winter. And with the exception of this, uh, this station right here. So the guys are going to have a lot of the summer off. As far when I mean by the summer off, I don't I mean not really chasing contractors. So I really want to try and get ahead on chasing water leaks and then addressing our I and I problem. And uh, seeing if we can start getting ahead on a lot of those issues, especially before we move to the new sewer plant. And uh, that'll also make the EPA extremely happy with us. So they know we have a huge I and I problem. And quite frankly, we thought it was a bigger problem than Frog Hollow. However, we learned that that's not the case. Backstreet is the bigger problem. Okay. And, oh, two more things. I'm the new Becky. You keep it brief. <laughs> I'll three water rescues. Three <laughs> water rescues. Fire had with that nice new motor that they bought two years ago. I will eat the crow on that all day long. So um, good job to those guys.
We met with Director John Kerry from the governor's office. Really good discussion there. Hopefully you're gonna get a lot of money put toward our small cities project. We are 900,000 short on that for everybody's um, SA. And then the safety, senior safety corridor, you know, we submitted for cap for that. We haven't found out yet what we got. So hypothetically, we're still 800 short on that. Hopefully we get some tap, but also hopefully we get some assistance from the governor's office through a couple different channels, not directly from the governor, but different channels that they have up there, which will bring down our match quite a bit. And then uh, talk to FEMA today. Uh, we are going to have to run the questions, even though they showed the preliminary map of where they're going to pull the trailer park out of it. We still have to officially um, run our questions through the appeal process, which should be late summer this year. And then, uh, yeah, we need to sue. So I don't know if I need your guys' approval to ask Bob or if I just ask Bob. Just ask me. Just ask you. I need you to go sue that guy that owes his three grand sure. for water. He had until today. Did you get a check from him? Didn't get a check today. All right. Yeah. Simple. Let's do it. And then we have another one that owes us twenty six thousand or twenty three thousand for a hydrant. Okay. Be a use okay. for that? Maybe. Maybe. Only if he uses Black's Law. That's it. All right. I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, I know we put out for the pool manager and for the parks and rec. Have we gotten applications for those? Are we doing other advertising? That's so funny. You brought that up. Okay. Yeah, we got Rudy for, uh, okay. yeah, okay. so Rudy um, is going to do that. So, I, but he can't do it until I have uh, I O. I didn't have time to get it in for this one. I need to do a, uh, what am I thinking? Ordinance. Staffing ordinance. Okay. Yeah. So I owe a staffing ordinance that would uh, have that, the pool manager, the lifeguards. Quite frankly, we pretty much owe you one for the whole city, anyways. Um, you should have that every year. Maybe we'll just renew it every year. Mm -hmm. So I need to dust off the one from last year okay. and then put this year's date on it. Um, I just was wondering, because I know that we posted it on the city's page and like on our social media i just didn't know if we needed to like advertise for these things in like the paper or anything sure um so we got rudy um which was good we had another one apply and she thought it was more of a full-time position oh. yeah okay. yeah like uh monday through friday oh yeah um and then i do have every intention of asking you guys uh to uh, increase the pay for him, fifteen hundred dollars. He's willing to mow the grass down there for an additional fifteen hundred dollars. Currently, his pay is either four thousand or forty five hundred. I don't remember. And then for an additional fifteen hundred, he'd be willing to mow the grass with our equipment and uh, fuel and everything else down there. So that would be a huge burden off Jason's guys. So as we went, um, as far as pool uh, manager, nope, new, uh, nope. Okay. So yes, we do need to expand that. Um, definitely wider. You might want to think about um, like posting it down like at the aquatic center. I know you. Sure. Like, 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 so good idea. Absolutely. And one of the other things too that uh, Taylor was—I uh, don't remember the gentleman's name, but uh, he, the guy's name from OU that reached out to you. For summer interns, was it seniors for, or was it uh, master's program interns, paid internships? A while ago, yeah. Or no, it was undergraduate political oh, okay. science students. And I don't think it was just summer. I think it was. I think it was school year. Oh, okay, never mind. Not what I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> I have one, I have one question. So the no station will replace me. DFW, if we corrected the problem with the jail. Yes, we have actually. So the EPA has worked with the jail and they are working with DLZ. They're not working with Michael Betts, but they're working with uh, the other engineer, Michael Betts' boss up there, and they're working to come up with their own catchment device up there to catch bulk items before they come down the hill. 
So yeah. yes, that is a huge win for us. Yeah, I didn't want to throw a new pump in there and then have the trash. It's, it's no. actually cut down right okay. now. So yes. This is a good discussion, Mister. Yeah. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, have you had any calls or comments on the change of the street lights or their pricing now? I've Not seen, a one. I've okay. seen comments. Not a one. I'm sure you have. I'm running every chance I can. Um, I mean, I haven't got a single complaint. Okay. Um, just Facebook commandos. Not a single complaint. I mean, I guess Dan complains every time I see him, but that doesn't. No, yeah, I do not. I said you it now. You know, I do it. We just ignore it. I do have a trash update though. Okay. So trash update. We did talk about that in committee, mm -hmm. and uh, trash. The biggest problem is you're doing great. They're picking up trash, but they're not taking it all because there's a seven bag limit in the contract. So, um, as we talked about in committee, um, we're still going to have him come in and explain. He's got a bunch of pictures too, the before and after. So they take pictures before and after, and uh, so they're taking trash and they they're taking more than they're supposed to. So they say. I mean, um, I don't measure trash, so I don't know. I mean, I'm not here. You know, I, so I can only assume that's equal to 755 gallon bags. But, uh, you know, they take it. And if it's way more than what's supposed to be taken, then they don't take it. So part of the problem with us is because you, uh, council sets the fees. What, what does the sticker mean when it comes to bags? So our stickers do not define bags. So one of the proposals was, or there's two proposals. The way Athens does it is they'll just take everything and then send you the bill. And then, or um, sell the, take, or what is it, two bags? Two, or yeah, two bags per sticker, which is equivalent to 250 a bag. Whereas if um, the other places where they sell it by the bag or where they, where they charge in Athens, it's $3 a bag is what they charge in Athens. Is that commercial or residential? Residential. Okay. Because my issue was commercial. So we did talk about the re uh, that as well. Now, if I rec I don't remember your specific situation as far as the, I know there was volume or was it the price difference? Both. Okay. Because the tags were purchased on a commercial account. And then found out you didn't need the tags for commercial. They base it upon volume, right? And but what could have been a forty-five dollar charge turned out to be three hundred, right? So, well, I guess I got the answer for residential, then not so yeah. much the commercial side, because to be quite honest with you, I stayed pretty much out of the commercial side altogether. Where and then the and as Mr. Duffy pointed out in committee. The previous, see, and I don't remember if the contract said unlimited or if they just picked up unlimited. I don't remember. 20 bags. 20 bags. 20 bags. 20 bags. They picked up unlimited. 20 bags is what so I, I have a medium sized rolly thing. Right? I don't have that little one, but I don't have like the big one. So I, I can have that plus. A bag's considered a 55 gallon bag. Okay. But I have like 13 gallon. You know, kitchen garbage bags, right. and I have like you know, two or three in there at the most. Three would be like a heavy try sweep for me. I guess what I'm thinking is like, doesn't it kind of even right. out? Can't like, bags. you know, I only have two bags of trash, but you have nine. Like, at some point, are we now kind of like evening out? Well? Around town, I guess I don't understand. So, but a lot of that does is stops people from outside dumping. Yeah, I get that. I get that. That point. But. I don't know. So, I don't know how they generate that many bags of trash. Yes, I'm going to be. No, I just, I just wanted to. I don't, you know, Dan, that's a good point. I don't either. I mean, like, I see some people's trash piled up, but I'm like, what are they? Yeah, what do they do? How do you do that? Like, Re yeah. Recycle people. Or how to recycle too? I got something to say. You ready? Cool. Happy. No. Oh no, we got stuff to do. You. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Scott. Happy birthday to you. Now we get paddle. <laughs> paddling rail come in handy. The paddle of justice is probably stowed. <laughs> and be easily removed. Yes. Uh, quick question on the EB is: uh, Is there a way to for a uh, boutique hotel to validate the EB charger? Well, I mean, how would you EB validate a free charger? Well, if, it's, it's if we have a fee, if we, you know, oh, I yeah. just wondered if uh, there's there a way for a boutique hotel if they ever make if it ever gets built. Uh, I mean, to I think. <laughs> Well, I think that those two builders that partner together usually take decades to finish okay. anything. I, I, I mean, it might not even work right then. It's going to be air truck. Uh, yes. You know, so he also has a freaking dump truck with an air horn. <laughs> that could free and a wide road area. <laughs> and I have a, what? Well, Rooster? I was gonna say you uh, have a rooster. I was gonna say I have a rooster. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say a very large in your backyard. Stop. So anyway, <laughs> throw it in your backyard. <laughs> hey, all right, can all right, we, all right, we have to do this. All right, going down there. Good order. Good the order. <laughs> Mr. Clement, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's like a mile. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, oh my goodness. Ah, I, I in the prayer I wanted to you know. Um, for folks to you know think about those in Ukraine, and, and also I failed to mention that uh, you know pray for our soldiers too uh, here for all those that have those serving, uh, keep them safe as well with uh, things that are happening around the world right now. So just put that out there. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Yeah, and that's also I was going to say um, you know prayers for the people of Ukraine um, that peace comes quickly for them. And also for the Spangler family that they can start to heal. Thank you. I will um, echo those comments for the Ukraine and the Spangler family. So, um, uh, well, you know, I was up in uh, Logan and I did some uh, work in some people's houses up there, the realtor and uh, another person of the community, and they were commenting on. The question was, what are you guys doing in Nelsonville? Why has things changed? Why is the property value going up? Why is this? Why is that? Um, um, they noticed that their homeless has increased dramatically. Um, and it all starts with leadership. And I'd just like to thank our leaders of the city and city council for all the good work that we've done. So, Mr. Sherman. Doing good. Got a splinter over there? A little bit. He's okay, okay, he comes from working all day. <laughs> Go try that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> getting deep. All right, Mr. 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 Boot. Well, thank you very much. I uh, want to echo Ms. Jones, Mr. Bailey's uh, sentiments. Uh, also, watch out for our military families and our, our boys and girls and women over there. Um, kind of echoing what we talked about earlier with the stoplights and all that good stuff. Saw a comment on Facebook and I reached out to Jason today. Uh, I was going to do anyway. It was, a, it was a good point that was put out there about something in the city that you know could use some attention. But I guess my point is we're the most open city government we've had here ever. You don't have to put it on Facebook. Call, text, email. Facebook, one of us. It's out there. But don't put it out there as get it together, Nelsonville. Just hey, Mr. Frank. What do you think about that? I think this is a problem. What are you gonna do? You're gonna address it, right? Work together with us here. Um, I'm confident that my email and telephone number is published uh, as well to be contacted. So yep, we're we're all very accessible, we're all out there, we're not hard to get in touch with. So yeah, it, it doesn't have to be a continual, you know, like Jason had said in his comments there a few meetings ago. Let's work together instead of making it a negative environment all the time. Yeah. Greg's come Dan, together and do this thing. Greg, Dan, and I don't even leave the city limits usually. So, all right, that's it. Thank you. All right, um, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Hold on.
She ran out of space. She ran out of paper. I did. Thanks, Scott. Let's get ready. Um, Fly it up. Well, I don't know who. Um, <laughs> Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Thumper. Yes. 